Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Snowfall Season 6, Episode 1 and Episode 2. The final season is here. It's a weird feeling to be talking about it because it's exciting, but it's also sad. It is like all of the different emotions at once because we all don't want this show to end. I personally don't want this show to end because I feel like there's going to be some sort of horrible, tragic ending to all of this. I don't ever want this show to end. If you have been with this channel a long time, then you know that this is one of my favorite shows of all time. I absolutely love it. So it's really difficult because I've been like counting down the days yeah. for it to come back because I just, I, I can't wait to see what happens, but I know that once it's over, it's over. But I mean, we'll always have the memories and go back and rewatch it. The show is very rewatchable, but yeah, it's, it's tough, man. Like these two episodes were jam packed and I really wish that they were released one at a time because, you know, I want to savor it. Yeah. I, and also there was just so much that happened in these two episodes that it kind of felt like it was just like, no, no, not, yeah. not all at once. Just one at a time. Give us some time to talk about it, think about it, reflect yeah. on it. Man, these two episodes were good. FX, I know you guys are putting this show on Hulu. But you're not Hulu. You don't have to follow this model. You, I, you, you, doing this with a lot of your shows now. You even freaking did it with American Horror Story, which we also cover. It's just like, why? But okay, we're we're gonna get into everything with Franklin, with Jerome, oh. Louis. There's this is a there's so much just to get into. This is a very very rich show. But before we go any further, hit that subscribe button because just like these episodes were jam packed. So is the lineup of shows that we have coming up. Like, over the next month, we have, you know, The Mandalorian is going to be very, very soon in the near future. You know, Power Book 2 Ghost coming back before too long. Yellow Jacket, Succession. Yeah, like... <laughs> Bel Air, Blacklist. I mean, Survivor's coming back. There is so much happening here at this channel. So hit that subscribe button. That way you also don't miss our weekly snowfalls. We're going to be here after every episode with a video talking with you guys about it. And follow us over on our Instagram, Matt and Just TV. Okay, we need to start with Jerome. Uh, I need to start uh... with Jerome. This has been... This, oh my goodness, these two episodes were really difficult. Again, if you guys have been here for our snowfalls, uh, you know how much Jerome means to me. And for those of you who are new, the reason why <laughs> is because Jerome really reminds me of my grandpa Compton, who was very sort of hard on the outside, but very soft for his family. And his family was like, number one, if you wanted to, you know, get my grandpa to that level of Jerome, you know, screw with his family. That That's going to be the thing that's going to bring you down. And yeah. that is exactly what happened here with Jerome. And we've seen it this whole time, like family first, business second. And it sort of has like fluctuated with other characters on the show where sometimes it's business first, family second, sometimes it's family first, you know, it, it's gone around and around for other people, but Jerome is family first. And he said that in this episode again with Louie, where he was just like, you know, I just, I don't want to have these problems. And she's like, yeah, I know, I know that's what you said, but you know, we we're here now. So I'm, I'm sorry for your luck, but this is how it all kind of played out. And oh my goodness, that last scene with Jerome and Franklin uh. sitting in that diner where he explains what Franklin means to him that he you know, when Sissy was going through everything, he was like, come out here. You know, I know I don't really have my life together that much, but together, you know, we can help raise Franklin together and we can give him this better life. And then Franklin came and he was like, and for me, man, it was like, you were my everything. I felt like I could raise you. You made me a better person. I was hoping to make you a better person. And then you became this man that I was really proud of. And now you've become this man that I, I don't know if I had a hand in raising you like this, or you went in a different direction that I didn't, but you could see that guilt like piling on him 
to that point where he starts hitting Franklin. He's got his own frustrations that he's just unable to deal with. And then Franklin pulling that gun out on him and him just being like, do it. I was like, please don't give up, Jerome. I see it happening inside you, but please don't. I think Jerome was ready to give up in that moment. I mean, there's still a lot of season left. So there's still a lot of time to kind of get to the other side of that. But I, I think in general, what you're going to see a lot of this season are a number of people feeling desperation and a number of people feeling regret. And I think with Jerome, there's both in this same moment where I think he's desperate for some sort of relief from the chaos that has sort of become his life or he's in it fully with Louis at this point. We know how hard he rides for his family. So he's not going to back off on anything with Louis, but then, you know, at the same time, he's got all this regret towards you know, Franklin towards them ending up in this position where he's probably thinking on some level, could I have stopped this train before it really even left the station? And we were ever even in this point in the first place. And I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, we all know everyone is sort of in control of their own decisions, mm -hmm. but you know, Jerome at the same time, if he's taking on this parental role in his head, mm -hmm. he's going to think, okay, I'm responsible. I'm the person who can get from Franklin from point A to point B. I didn't do that. What did I do wrong? How much regret should I have? How much responsibility should I have? And I think that's why this season is going to be so horrifically emotional. And we're all going to be so sad and so upset because we all just the way that the system took advantage of these people, you know, we can talk about Franklin, we can talk about Jerome, Louie, all these other people, but it's put them in this position now where everyone is floundering and that's manifesting itself in like a number of different ways. Yeah. Like as much as the show is about the business and, you yeah. know, the drug trade and everything that's going on for me, the heart of the show is really about the family and the accountability to each other. I mean, we didn't see Wanda in this episode. I know we will, but I've always said she's a really important character to the snowfall world because she's kept everybody very honest about what they're doing and what the effects of this business are having on regular people, people that they care about, what's actually going on in the community around them and what is going Going on within the family and we see this really weighing on Jerome where Sissy has asked him to you know try to find a way to make peace bring the family together Louis is also kind of like yeah you know we're on the other side of this now I don't really know what to do about it but you know we're together and then you've got Franklin who you know didn't want it to end up like this but it did end up like this and even that scene with Louis and Jerome where she's kind of like we saw him have this conversation with Franklin Franklin's like yeah I came to Louis for help I asked her for help and you know she turned me away kind of thing and he didn't really know about this where Louis was then like yeah you know he did but he also pulled a gun on me and told me he was going to kill me. So, you know, I, I don't know what you want from me. Jerome is so complicated and he's in the absolute worst position. And that is saying a lot because everybody's informing on everybody. Everybody's yes. got everybody after them. There is so much happening. But Jerome, he's in the worst position. Yeah. And and he killed Diamond. I mean, we haven't even spoken no. about that brutal scene where... He's saying that it's about the money, but it's not about the money. He just is, it's about his family and everybody yeah. just, it all falling apart, his own guilt, and he took it too far. Desperation. And it, this is all, everything that is going on in Jerome's head. I think he, he is thinking so outside of himself because I think, you know, a lot of us clearly have not been in the situation where Jerome and some other characters on Snowfall are, but I think we've all been in situations before, whether it's just stress, exhaustion, like mm -hmm. something going on in our lives where we start to think in this way where we never really think before and we lose sort of control over, you know, who we are or we're so desperate to get back to something. Like yeah. I think Jerome is so desperate to sort of get back to some sort of situation of peace and harmony that he's willing to do extreme things in order to make it happen. And it's sort of an interesting parallel to, 
you know, Sissy, who has been working with Ruben for some time now, and I'm sure in Sissy's head for the majority of her life, she never <laughs> considered that she would be working with an organization quite like the one that Ruben is affiliated with. But mm -hmm. in order to establish that sort of peace, she's willing to sort of put her neck out there on the line, no matter how dangerous it is. And nobody is thinking about, you know, what's happening as a result of this a week or a month from now. It's all about like, right now. Yeah, everybody's in a really desperate position. I mean, we also know there's everything coming in with Kane. He's awake. He's mad. He yeah. knows about Louis and everything going on. And they have found out now because they went to go talk to Scully, uh. who's got a burger phone. <laughs> but even if you have, you know, you, you know you're in kind of a weird position when Scully is the voice of reason where he's like, fix your family. Yeah. Straight. Fix your family right away sort of thing. But Sissy is also trying to do right by Alton and everything that happened. That conversation she had with Franklin where she is just like, why are you still sort of riding the fence here with everything that's happening with Teddy? Like, yeah, you want your money back. Yeah, you want to deal with him, but you still believe in, you know, our government and our country and what they're doing for us. Like, are you kidding me? Like, after everything that's happened to me, you, uh, Alton, like, she's like, I am done with it. Like, I am not going to be the person waiting for my country to come and have my back because they don't. So now I'm working with Ruben and I need you to talk to him. I think Sissy, Sissy's coming from this. With, in a very understandable place when yes. it comes to Franklin. I yes. think her, the biggest issue Franklin has is I don't think Franklin can really think like Sissy at this moment because Sissy did not just get her entire fortune sort of taken away from her in the way that Franklin did. And I think Franklin is still processing a little bit of the grief that comes along mm -hmm. with that. And, and, you know, a little bit of the regret that comes along with him getting himself in this position in the first place. And I think he's still kind of trying to figure out and unravel sort of in his head what do I want to do? How do I want to go about this? How many options do I want to play? Like I, We all know Franklin is a planner. Franklin is a schemer. He's incredibly mm -hmm. smart. He likes to think like three or four steps ahead. But mm -hmm. I think the problem now is because he doesn't know exactly where to turn. He's just like, he's casting out like fishing lines in like eight different directions. And you can't hold eight different fishing rods at once, Franklin. You are not an octopus. This is not going to end well for you. No, he's in a position where he wants to get his money back so yeah. that he can go on and be with V and have their child and have their life just taken care of with that money. And without yeah. that money, he can't do that. And he's very much on the road to finding a way to make that happy ending happen for him that he is like, driving down every road <laughs> yeah. because there's a few opportunities where he might be able to get to Teddy to get to his money. He's got V's mom who's now coming to the picture. I mean, she seems like she's going to be some trouble. V yeah. has said that she's trouble, but he's desperate. You know, everything's going on with Gustavo who's now an informant because everybody's an informant right now and yeah. telling on everybody. Yeah. They're telling. Everybody's <laughs> telling. But, you know, Gustavo has come to him with this picture of Ruben as well to be like, who is this? And again, you know, we got Franklin driving down this road being like, I'll tell you if you give me Teddy and my money. Like, yeah. he really is down every road he possibly can be to get his money. Franklin, I, I have some bad news. This isn't going to work. I, I I don't want to be like, the, you know, the ultimate know. downer. I, I, you know. Franklin dying feels like an inevitable conclusion to this show. I don't know. I don't know if it, it's not what I want per se, but it just feels like so many of these shows, they really do put you in a position where the main character ends up having to pay for a lot of what they've done. But I think what makes Snowfall complicated, and, you know, we alluded to this a little earlier, is that Franklin, you know, he has done some very bad things and we can't just gloss over that. But he's also the product of a very corrupt system and something that put him in a really horrible situation where he was taken advantage of, where he was sort of catapulted down with these promises that weren't made out to be true. So 
I think it is really complicated. I am really worried it's going to be just so, like, cut and dry as they're going to kill him off. Okay, I do not want a spoiler alert for everyone who hasn't seen Breaking Bad, but I do not need this to be some sort of Breaking Bad ending where he just ends up dead. And I really don't want to see that he just ends up in jail because that's that is... That will be the worst ending for me. And I know we've all seen the commercials. I've seen them a hundred times. I've been watching a bunch of catfish lately <laughs> on Hulu. But the good thing about that yeah. is that they've also been showing me this trailer over and over again for Snowfall where, you know, Franklin's running towards his family and then he's running the other way and there's cops and burning palm trees. I'm just like, he can't, I do not want to see him get arrested. It's just not the way. If I have to choose between him dying and arrested, let's pick that maybe he runs off to an island with his woman. <laughs> the, third <laughs> door. the third door. No, I just, I know he's probably not going to have the perfect happy ending that he wants, but I, I just don't want to see him die, and I'm not. I'm really not interested in him being in jail. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not either. And I, I hope there's a different road that to that third door that will sort of make itself clear over time. Like it's, it's hard right now because we're only a couple episodes in. But, but just, Teddy, Teddy has to die, yes. and it has to be by Franklin's hand. It has to yeah. be. And I think Teddy will die. Like I'm, I'm more confident about that than almost any other character die. It's just like this guy is just. The worst. He is manipulative. He is awful. I mean, he is a he's a shrewd antagonist. Like he's somebody who I don't think he's gonna die until like near the very end of this show. Oh, but it's gonna be so satisfying. I I'm not yeah. even gonna pretend. Yeah, like he is just so like I don't want to say he's drunk with power, but he's drunk off this idea that you know what he is doing is right, and I think he refuses to sort of acknowledge or accept any other feeling, and I think he's also just like so far in at this point that he wants to have a legacy and i don't think he even cares what that legacy is at this point because he's lost so much and he sacrificed for the sake of making this happen and he could have walked away he could have done something <laughs> different and it would have been easier for him it would have been easy in my opinion it would have been easier for teddy to get out than it would have been for franklin to get out and teddy has willingly continued to make these choices so i will not have sympathy for him when he dies i also think we're gonna lose gustavo oh. i know i do i think that the show is this is we're not going to get out of this final season without some main characters dying. And, you know, I think we're going to lose Gustavo. I think for sure we're going to lose Teddy. And I'm actually, and I've been worried about this since last season, that we're going to lose Jerome. That Jerome is on a road to us losing him because, you know, this show has a lot of heartbreak in it. I'm definitely more worried about Jerome coming out of these episodes than I was. I'm very going. worried. Okay. We mentioned it briefly, but I think let's just throw another shout out here to Scully, who was in like, I don't know, a couple of that minutes. Burger phone. He... Oh my God. Listen, <laughs> I I grew up in the same yeah. time period. So like back in that time, I remember that burger phone. I remember everybody had these weird phones. I had one too. I had a Garfield phone where you pulled his back out and it was like a phone or whatever. This was the time where there was all these really weird phones that were in the shape of burgers. I had a phone that was a uh, Dodge Viper and it was bright red and it was like the first phone I ever had. See, the Scully's in this episode for just like a couple of minutes. He feels like he was like the football player who came in and scored like three touchdowns and then just like to, he was he like did so much goodness. And, uh, Scully is just man. Such a, like the thing is, there's so many great characters. I did find myself missing Leon. Like I know where he is. I know what's going on. It's just like. I love Leon, so I'm always going to be sad when he's not around in a given episode. I love Leon. I love Wanda. Yeah. They just better be off in Africa reconnecting mm -hmm. and, and not in this mess at the moment. I miss seeing them, but I'm glad that we didn't see them in these two episodes because there was so much going on these episodes. I yeah. worry that their story would have gotten a little bit lost. And if I don't have a happy ending for those two, oh my God, it's going to be a very different video. Yeah. I'm going to be so mad. And I understand that it's not going to be like a storybook ending yeah. where they go off together and live a happy life. But like, oh my God, if you don't give me See, that ending, I, it's going to be so bad. I think 
I think it's Please. Okay, I don't want to I don't want to Listen, Wanda keep as I said, she keeps the show uh... honest and she has been sort of this beacon of hope because while there's a lot of people that struggle with addiction that don't make it out on the other side. There are lots of people that do. Yes. And seeing her be one of those people in this world with people around her that she knows that, you know, helped influence her into that spot and her getting to the other side of it. Those stories aren't told all that often. And I think that she's just, she's wonderful. Okay. I, I think you're going to get your wish. I, th I think Wanda and Leon are going to make it out alive, and I'm, I'm hoping I'm not jinxing this and saying it. But... I don't know, because Twitter, I don't know. The See, Snowfall Twitter has been kind of like, if you're expecting a happy ending, well, you know, you better put on your hard hat. I'm just like, you guys better. You, you better not. I root for Wanda. And yeah. then Gail Bean wrote me back, and she's like, me too. I'm like, <laughs> yes, yes. See, okay. <laughs> Snowfall Twitter, I understand how you feel. We, I think we agree with that there's going to be a lot of sad elements to this. Like this show is Shakespearean in a way. Like there's a tragedy that's present here, but I think there have to be people who live on to tell the tale. And yes, I and think, make the change. And that is Leon. Yeah. I, I think it just, it makes sense for Leon and Wanda to potentially be those people, but we will see. We are early on in the season. Still, we will be here to break it all down and, or be very upset depending on what happens. Oh. I know, I know. But go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you guys don't miss any other reviews. Thank you for watching. We'll see you here next time.